So once we're satisfied with this project, we can save the scene. That way we're able to uh, find it and open it at a later time. So be sure to save this um, as your fourth and final iteration. And when you're completely finished, you can save as 05 final. That way you know that this is the final version that you're happy with. Also, just having the scene file um, is the 3D object. We'd like this image that we've just produced. So we can also save our render. So if we go to File, Save Image, we can save this image out as a JPEG, a PNG, um, any file format, and saving as a JPEG will then be able to share our final product with our friends. So be sure to save your rendering once you're done. In the save mode type, uh, be sure to select save color managed image as opposed to raw image. What that means is if you made any adjustments to these settings, saving with uh, the raw image will not save these settings. Saving a colored managed image will save with the way the render looks in the render view. So I'll just name this. Uh, be sure to name it with your initials and then the title of the logo. So this is my Love 3D logo. So I'll go ahead and save that file. Now let's take a look at on our Windows Explorer browser where we can find this now. So if you navigate over to your Explorer file, go to Documents, navigate to your Maya folder, and within your Maya folder you can go to Projects, go to the default project, and then look in your Images folder and this is where you'll find your JPEG image that we just saved. So opening this up in just a regular image viewer, default image viewer program, we're now able to look at our final product produced in Autodesk Maya. So again, this JPEG is a file that we could show or share with our friends online. So let's recap what you've learned in the last hour of this Autodesk Quick Start Maya video series. In stage one, we started off with creating the 3D text. So do you remember where we're able to create the 3D text from? Well, if you've guessed the Maya main menu, you're correct. We went to the main menu and we created our text from there. Uh, there we were able to output a bevel of our 3D geometry. And we explored uh, tools such as the channel box, our attribute editor. We used the toolbox to manipulate our geometry. Uh, we learned hotkeys in stage one to uh, navigate 3D space, such as orbiting, panning, and tracking. And we even used the text tool to create symbols, such as the heart. So stage one was a good introduction to navigating Maya and also creating 3D geometry. In stage two, we entered into the materials and texturing. So there we took an introductory look at how we can create base material shaders. There we assigned Lambert materials to our geometry, and we took a look at how we can edit those from the attribute editor. Uh, we had settings such as color um, and special effects, and there we uh, also applied ramp materials. So we got into how we can work with normals. So as far as menu tools, we learned how we can use our polygons menu set, how we can uh, adjust and modify normals, how we can work with our UVs to project uh, planar UVs onto our geometry. And by the end of stage two, we had some nice dynamic material textures applied to our 3D objects. In stage three, we got into cameras and lighting. So there's where we started to really bring our project together. Uh, we created a camera for the scene environment and we set our camera view up for our final render. We also created point lights in the scene and we worked with the lighting theory of three point lighting to be able to uh, light our environment and, and play a nice color theory balance between cool colors and warm colors um, on our logo. And so at that point we were doing test renders and this is what the logo was starting to look like at that point of the project. And that brought us into stage four, polishing and special effects. There's where we started applying uh, blend materials to the bevel edges to really get the logo to trace and pop out from the scene. We even enabled mental ray which really turned up the quality of our project and then we played with the exposure and control settings to go from kind of a bland looking render to add some contrast and, and really draw out the colors to make that pop in the render. And that gave us our final product, this JPEG image that now we'd be able to upload to Facebook or share on a social network to send to our friends. And just a special challenge, ask your friends and your family to give you some feedback on the logo that you created.
uh, see if they have any suggestions such as the color or changes that you could make to your logo and then go back and try and make those changes to improve upon the quality of your logo that's a great exercise to improve on your efficiency also see if you can go back through and create a new logo without referencing these videos that's a great exercise to make sure that you understand the tools that we've had a chance to look at so far. So at this point, we hope that you've enjoyed working with Autodesk Maya. This quick start series was designed to walk you through step by step on how to work on a project from start to finish. Uh, we took a look at modeling, materials, lighting, and finally rendering. If you enjoyed your experience working in the software, and you're interested in professional training to find work in this field, then visit us at 3dtraining.com and sign up for a free one-hour intro class for more information.